Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and welcome to another episode of our RP series out here on Redlawn Preserve. Now, as you can see, we are jumping back into our F450 out here at the shop because, you know, we were on vacation for a little bit there. You know, we took the uh, we took our new Dodge with the toy hauler out to the campsite. You know, we did a little bit of wheeling, but it's time to get back to work. Now, one thing that our shop and our business in this area has been missing is a heavy-duty wrecker. And the reason I say it's been missing missing that is because, you know, there have been some recoveries that we've had to turn down, and I don't want to have to turn them down anymore. I want to be able to have a rig that can handle recoveries that are, you know, maybe out of the scope of some of the trucks that we have right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire up this thing, the F-450 shop truck. We're going to head down to the dealership, and we're going to option out a new truck for the shop, and it's going to be probably one of the beefiest wreckers we have ever built. So let's fire up the Ford and get on down there. Back it on out of the shop. I wish we could open this gate just a little bit more, but you know, it's uh, that's about as far as it opens. So kind of is what it is on that one. Now, I think what we'll do is we'll head through town to get back this time. We'll go over the main bridge and then we'll head on down to the dealership from there. Let's see. Man, we should have uh, we should have um, stopped at this fishing shop real quick. I, I I almost said fishing store, and then I said fishing shop, and then it kind of came out as one word in you know in my head, and it didn't really it, it it didn't really turn out very well because you know we went to the we went to the fishing spot when we were adventuring recently in the Chevy Tahoe. And if we had had, you know, maybe more supplies, it might have been a little bit of a better time. But just kind of ripping through town. This thing is... Who drove this last? Because they definitely left it on the hot tune. They... Whoa! It is like sliding on the, <laughs> on the highway. It is... It's like blowing the tires off. Blowing the rear tires off on the highway whenever I give it throttle. I mean, someone... I don't know who... But someone left it on the high map for sure. Oh, stop. Rather not wreck the shop truck today. Please and thank you. Do a burnout. Yep. <laughs> oh, this thing is ridiculous. All right, let's make our way on down to the... Ooh, don't scratch it. Please don't scratch it. I was about to say the boss is going to be mad, but then again, I am the boss, so I'll probably... Yeah, I'd be mad at myself if I scratched this thing. Oh, dude. All right. So, dealership coming up right here on the left. And before we get into that mud, I'm going to get the four-wheel drive turned on. And we're going to raise up our suspension and send it. Wow, okay, too much wheel speed. Way too much wheel speed to send it through that. Never mind. All right, let me go ahead and turn this thing around. We'll get it parked up right here outside the garage. They always let us park here when we're, uh, you know, when we're buying something new at the dealership. It's kind of just part of the agreement we got with them, you know? All right, suspension back down, shut it down, and let's head on inside the garage and see what they've got for us. Now, truck store-wise, we've got some stuff to look through for sure. And this right here is at the top of the list. Now, I haven't had a Pacific in the fleet in a long time, but the P12 with the Orca 2 package is going to be one of the wildest heavy wreckers I have ever had. And as far as the engine setup goes, this is what we're going to... Well, actually, what should we put in it? I think, yeah, the Westline V16 M2680. Limitless torque is how they describe this thing, and I think that that just about sums it up perfectly. S plus power to weight rating. Gearbox is going to be probably Crawlerbox Special HD because this thing, I mean, it's huge, but we're also going to need to be able to use it in some like weird scenarios, especially for a truck this big. So I'm thinking it's either going to be heavy haul or raised. Mm. The raised is probably still tough enough to handle what we're going to throw at it. Now, you can have a 60-inch tire, or you can have a 71. A 71-inch mil-spec tire with ginormous super singles. I am not even sure what direction I want to go on this thing yet, because, wow. <laughs> the options, though... 
The options are insanity. I think we're going to end up, well, God, those really do fit the bill, don't they? Those absolutely fit the bill. I think we're going to do that. The 71 inch heavy mil spec tire with the autonomous HD uh, winch setup. We're going to do the recovery kit on the back, twin tall wedge cap snorkels. And this is where we get to option in our heavy wrecker platform. 24-7 roadside assistance, dude. Oh, this thing is going to be so sick. All right, so we can do... Oh, dude, I love the little LED fogs that you could put on the front. I'm digging that. We could do a roof rack up there, a small, like, hood rack, I guess. Mud flaps on the back. I don't know if we want to do the mud flaps. I'm good, like, without them. And I guess you don't necessarily, like, need them around here. I don't know if there's any sort of, like, special compliance that we need, but I'm not worried about it. I'm really not, so I'm not going to bother using them. Now, we can do a little bit of extra weight up here on the front. I'm not sure how much extra weight we actually need, but the nice thing about it is that it's not really weighing us down all that much, and so I may actually go ahead and do it. Although... That bumper setup doesn't really fit the front end of this thing all that well. So I'm kind of going back and forth about it. You know what? I think we'll be fine without that setup. And then I think up top, we're going to do probably beacons and fogs. And then let's see. What do we want to do for an exhaust setup? Definitely a muzzle exhaust. That looks, that looks amazing. Then the mil spec wheels. And then in terms of the color setup, what do we want to paint this thing? I love the orange. The orange has always, like, it's been one of those colors that really kind of calls out to me about this truck. Like, oh, hey, by the way, that color works really well. Also, the orange with the lighter blue, that works amazingly well. There's really no shortage of color combinations either because the color combinations essentially go on and on and on and on and on. And then, you know, you eventually make your way back into more solid colors, and you're like, when do... And then down here at the bottom, you have all these, like, mil-spec colors. And so you really never run out of options. And I like that. I like the fact that you basically never run out of options on this thing in terms of colors. I think that's really, really cool. All right, where is the... I love the orange with the blue. There's something about that that just works on this thing, man. All right, it's gonna be bobble dark. Well... I've got that area explored, so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be beans up there on the dash. We need uh we need our friend with us today, I think. All right, you guys ready to get our new heavy wrecker out into the wild? I sure as heck am. Oh my god. This thing looks absolutely incredible. And I could not be more excited to have this added to our fleet. That looks so freaking good. Wow. With the recovery kit, the towing platform. Oh man, this is just like, it's, this is top notch, top level right here. And look at how massive it is from behind. That's like literally giant tow truck level. I don't even know what you would be towing with this, especially like in real life, what you'd be towing with this. But you'd be towing, you'd be towing some stuff of genuine mass, genuine mass for sure. <laughs> I'm definitely getting a photo of this thing. Wow. I'm getting all the photos of it. This thing, this thing needs, needs all of the pictures. It just, these are going to be all over the shop's Instagram page. I'll tell you that right now. Wow. All right. Time to start it up and drive it for the first time. Dude, it roars right to life. There's beans right there on the dash. Let's see what the horn sounds like. Yeah, that horn is absolutely 100% fitting. Like, there is there is no horn setup that fits this truck better than that. That is, that, that's perfect. I don't know how else to say it. That is literally and genuinely about as perfect as it gets. All right, let's see. Lockers are always on. So driving it through the mud, it really doesn't even flinch. I mean, we're in automatic mode right now. And just creeping along in first gear. These mil-spec tires digging in, doing work. God, I can't believe I never thought of optioning this thing out with a proper wrecker setup before. Yo, what's that? Holy crap. Literally, we haven't even made it back to the shop yet. And a call came in over the radio that they need a bus rescued. A freaking bus. 
What are the odds of a bus needing to be rescued not even, like, 10 minutes after we buy this thing and get it on the road? I mean, I suppose I'll take it. I haven't really gotten any experience in this thing before. But, you know, I'm down for it. Let's see what we can do. All right, let's head on out. Now, here's my question. Do we need to go ahead and activate the, uh, the beacons? Because if we turn on the beacons... Dude, that looks awesome. I tell you what, we won't activate the beacons until we get right up to where the bus is. But let's head on out. Let's see where this bus is at. Now, let me actually check the coordinates on the GPS because I want to make sure we're heading in the right direction. So, they said the bus was somewhere along one of the river bridges. Now, it sl they say it slipped off and it... Oh, there it is! There's the bus. Oh, it's in a... It's in a precarious position, isn't it? Why was a bus like that even back there in the first place? I really have no idea, but you know what? We're gonna go sort them out. And I don't know if there's any parts of the bus that are broken or damaged, but... Even if there are, I think we can still get it back to town just fine. Yeah, we'll get it back to town, we'll bring it down to the shop, and then we'll see what they can sort out with it from there, because we don't really work on buses, at least not all that often. All right, heading out on the main trail to get down to the... Oh, jeez, all right. Gotta watch out for those loose rocks. Apparently, they are not quite as friendly as I thought they were. Ain't that right, Beans? Yeah, he thinks they're about right as well. Well, oh, come on. Definitely one of my favorite interiors of any truck that has ever been in this game. And I know that this is a default truck interior, technically, but it's just, it's so beautiful. It really brings out every last ounce of the vibe that they are trying to convey with a truck like this. You couldn't get any more authentic of an interior if you tried. You really couldn't. Come on! I don't know why I have the front axle engaged. I mean, I tend to just engage the front axle anyway when I get onto the dirt, but it's not always the greatest move because sometimes it can make you understeer and sometimes it can make things be a little bit awkward with, like, the way the truck is driving. But, like, I'm not really too concerned about it. It's just kind of one of those things because, honestly, I usually just turn it on and forget about it to be brutally, like, honest about that. All right, where the road forks right here, we're going to make a right. Let's see what happens if we just throw this thing in high and just pedal down through this mud. It's trying. It's not necessarily the fastest way to get through here, but it's, it's sure as heck trying. Not bad. Pretty impressive, actually. The fact that it didn't bottom out whatsoever, top notch, I would say. I was actually really expecting it to bottom out on the front bumper because the front bumper does have, like, that piece that hangs really low in front of the truck. But again, I mean, it didn't have any interest in bottoming out, so we're good. Up the main hill. I love that, like, old-school-style steering wheel and, like, all the gauges you could ever freaking want. The good old, like, CB radio chilling right there. You got the cable for the horn. You got the fan. Oh, that's your AC, essentially. So, you know, you need AC? Yeah? Yeah? Well, there's your fan. Turn it on whenever you need it, and that's about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, that turns tight. Can I avoid the trees? Yes, thank you. I make my way up on... Ooh! Come on! Oh, not bad! This is actually so much more fun than I thought it would be to drive it in first person. Now I remember why, you know, when we were working our way through a lot of the, uh, a lot of the tasks and missions around the, uh, the Michigan region and the Alaska region way back when the game released, I really now remember why I loved driving this truck so much. Not only do I remember why I loved driving it so much, but I remember why I loved the interior view so much. The interior view is just, oh man, it is the stuff. Get back out into that exterior view real quick. Like, this is a truck that makes you think, eh, I could be an interior view for quite a while. And normally, I am a dedicated third-person view player when it comes to SnowRunner, but man, with this truck, yeah, it'll make you reconsider that sometimes. It will definitely make you reconsider that. Now, this should be coming up on our final approach to where the bus is, and my plan is to turn this truck around and hook to the bus from the front and essentially drag it out of the river. Now, is that fully realistic? Not really, no. But is it is it gonna be the most effective way to get the bus out? I think so. 
So long as it's not wedged up underneath that bridge, I think we'll be okay. But if it is wedged up underneath the bridge, we might have a few more issues on our hands that we need to think about. All right, easing it on up. The gear ratios in this truck are awesome, considering the fact that this is the Crawler Box. I mean, Crawler Box HD, you still got eight gears in automatic mode. I mean, you still got a fully usable set of highway speeds. 